bathroom. Turn the light on. That, that's better. It's Saturday, January 28th, 2012, and here is New York. I'm gonna depart from my usual let's go outside and visit places thing again to be more of a cultural critic. I went to a, went to the Morgan Library today. I was going to go more of a museum hopping sort of day and go to the Institute, International Center of Photography where they have what I hear is a fantastic exhibit of photographs by the murder scene photographer Ouija, but the line there was ridiculously long and I found out that I get in there free all the time. So I'm probably going to go on Tuesday, but tonight I went to the Morgan Library, which is in incredible institution. Basically, J.P. Morgan had a massive collection of books, created his own private library, and it's now one of the preeminent research institutions for literature in the world. There are four exhibits currently on display. One about Charles Dickens at 200, which is the main reason why I went to the Morgan this time. Robert Burns and the creation, the sort of bricolage of Auld Lang Syne, an exhibit on Islamic manuscripts, and finally an exhibit displaying several works of Dutch painters and artists in the time of Rembrandt. Frankly, my gr the greatest enjoyment I got from the museum was the Dickens exhibit featuring several of his letters, uh, drawings of characters used as illustrations for his books, several of his manuscripts on display, first edition copies of his book. And really the part that I enjoyed the most about the exhibit were the letters he wrote to friends about his trips to America, first in the 1840s and then later in 1867 and 1868 when he did a massive reading tour. And it really got me thinking about a couple things. First, of the constant thoughts I have about American spirit and our way of life, this constant social commentary going on in my head, which is why I love stuff like Campbell McGrath, who I've mentioned both in this series and often in life. And some of his letters were really fascinating, such as right here, I wrote this part down. The people are affectionate, generous, open-headed, uh, hospitable, enthusiastic, good-humored, frank and cordial to all strangers, anxious to oblige, far less prejudiced than have, they have been described to be. And yet, he said, also said about America that it was not the republic of his imagination. He thought of a much different place than what he saw. And he often, after his at trip in the 1840s, railed against America for its press, which frankly is a logical and pressing to this day concern. The lack at that point of an abolition of slavery. To that point, the U.S. had also not signed the Berne Convention, which was the International Copyright Union, and that was another point of concern of his. But when he returned in the 1860s, his attitude was much more positive. While the people certainly gave him the same adulation that he uh, enjoyed in the 1840s, he probably got more of an element of privacy than he received in the 1840s. That was one, another one of his personal concerns, because they never left him alone. But here, I think also it's an element, element that his work got to be put by himself on display to the American public, who ate it up in massive numbers, according to the exhibit. $1.5 million in today's money were er was earned from that reading tour, and it got me thinking of how reading tours are kind of weird. They're people who are generally private individuals in a very private art of writing, and they take it to the public in such a way that it takes on a new life, their work. It goes almost from the literary to the theatrical, without ever actually changing mediums. Media. Excuse me, media. His thoughts on literature were, fur were, were further fermented um, when I saw the Burns exhibit just a few moments afterwards. The Auld Lang Syne apparently was less a creation of Burns and more of a bricolage. There had been a poem uh, and song entitled Auld Lang Syne by Alan Ramsey, which Burns then took from, and also taking from songs of the day, developed this new song, and it's really interesting how this one thing that's taken 
a strange, peculiar holding in both American culture and certainly in Scottish culture as well. It's remained, and yet it was a collection of all sorts of different other media. And the other thing I thought of when I was at the exhibit was the fact that in this day and age we lack a singular voice uh, in national literature. It's probably due to the diversification of media, but it's interesting to see that while Burns is so well celebrated in Scotland, I mean, the man has his own holiday in Scotland, which was celebrated earlier this week, we lack that in a sense. I'll see y'all with normal videos tomorrow, actually dealing with one of the letters that Dickens wrote to a friend of his about the Astor Place riots.